What is the guys playing ask here and today I have the comparison of the Corsair Strafe RGB versus the new Razer Black Widow X Chroma. Both of these keyboards have a clicky style switch as the Strafe has MX Blues and the Black Widow X has Razer's green switches. How does one compare to the other? Let's find out! As you unbox these keyboards, there are already differing accessories. Corsair gives you a wrist rest, FPS MOBA keys, and a keycap puller. And like the Black Widow Ultimate, Razer on the other hand only gives you stickers, which you should keep in mind. Moving on, let's talk about the design of the Black Widow X first. Now when I first saw the video for the Black Widow X, I knew I had to get one because the design was very minimalistic and caught my eye. The new design is sleek as there is no more bezel around the perimeter of the keyboard as you can see. The keyboard itself is shorter and slightly heavier than the Strafe due to its military grade metal top construction. The no bezel design is very good because it'll be very easy to clean and maintain throughout its lifespan. Underneath the keyboard there are adjustable feet if you want to use it at a heightened angle and there is also a cable guider underneath so you can route the cable either to the left, right or middle of the keyboard. The material of the keyboard is just straight up matte metal which will not, I repeat, will not attract any fingerprints or oil on a keyboard itself which was something that the Blackwater Ultimate was known for. The numlock section of the keyboard also has been updated and they are now clear and visible to the user but keep in mind that all of the LEDs are green when toggled and there is no option to change it in Razer Synapse. Razer has also updated the font on their keycaps as well. And lastly, the Razer logo is where it usually is in the middle of the bottom of the keyboard under the Alt key. Now there are some things missing from the Black Widow X that were present in the Black Widow Ultimate. For example, the macro keys, USB pass-through, and mic audio pass-through are no longer existent in the new Black Widow X. There's also no white backplate underneath the switches to help boost the colors coming from the LEDs. All of these changes are something to consider. The Corsair design on the other hand is very similar. This keyboard is longer and slightly taller than the Black Widow. The finish of the plastic is very nice and it does not attract fingerprints either. Unlike the Black Widow X, the Strafe does have a small bezel around the perimeter of the switches which is something to keep in mind. A nice added touch that Corsair has is there are accent LEDs on the sides of the keyboard, something the Black Widow X does not have. The Corsair Strafe does have a white backplate underneath these keys which helps the color shine more efficiently to the user. While the Strafe does not come with any macro keys, you can still record macros in the Q software. The num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock indicators on the Corsair Strafe are largely visible in plain sight with a white backlight when toggled. The Strafe also comes with a USB pass-through and had adjustable feet on the bottom. Lastly, the Corsair logo is in two places, above the numpad and above the escape button. Moving on, let's talk about the key switches themselves. Now, if you watch my original comparison between the Corsair Strafe RGB and the Black Widow Ultimate Chroma, I bashed and bashed the Razer switches like there was no tomorrow. The one thing that I can tell you is to not fall for Razer's all gaming keycaps. Uh, statements. They claim that their key switches are specifically designed for gaming, but don't believe that hype. If you compare Cherry MX Blues versus Razer's green switches, you will hardly, hardly feel the actuation point difference. Having said that, I have to apologize. It was unfair in that video for me to compare MX Browns to Razer's green switches because they both offer different experiences. But now that I have two switches in the same category, it is more of a fair play. Having tracked both of them, I have to give Razer the upper hand this time, because I could actually feel the shorter actuation point in the Black Widow X compared to the MX Blues in the Strafe. When I typed on the Strafe, it felt a little sticky to type on, and it seemed like it required a little more force to toggle the switch. Razer switches, on the other hand, just want me typing more, because the actuation point and tactile feedback is just amazing. If you don't believe me, you have to try it out yourself and you will immediately feel the difference. I've also read some complaints about the Strafe's spacebar feeling mushy, which is also present in my unit. Razer has also boosted their lifespan of their key switches from 60 million to 80 million key presses, which could possibly mean they have more control in manufacturing. Razer gets the win for me in this category, but before we move on, here's a quick sound test between the two.
Now let's talk about the LEDs. Both these keyboards are similar when it comes to this topic because they both have RGB LEDs in each individual key. The only difference is how each keyboard delivers the intensity of the LEDs. The Corsair key switches are clear and have a white backplate underneath it, which allows more light to shine effectively. The Razer switches on the other hand are not clear and also have no white backplate underneath, which does not spread the light as effectively as the Strafe. And lastly, Corsair has accent lightings on the side of the keyboard, which is a nice touch. Moving on, we have the software comparison. Now, the Strafe works with Corsair's Q software and the Black Widow works with Razer's Synapse software. Both of these softwares work pretty well, but Razer still has the upper hand on this topic. Since my last comparison video, Corsair's software is still all over the place and hasn't changed much at all. You still need to go to multiple windows to simply create an effect, and creating the effect is not as easy as you would think. Also, Corsair doesn't assign a default profile switching key, so you have to manually go in and add that yourself. In both of the softwares, you can import profiles from other users, which might make the experience using Corsair software much easier. Razer Synapse, on the other hand, is as user-friendly as it can get and is very simple to create or edit your own profile. And lastly, I'm just going to go over some miscellaneous features that each keyboard comes with. Each keyboard comes with media controls which require for you to hold down the FN key with the desired action key. Razer has about 13 brightness settings and Corsair has only 3 and they are all adjustable by the dedicated buttons on each keyboard. Corsair's cable is not braided and is soldered in the middle of the keyboard while Razer's cable is braided and can be routed to the left, right, or middle of the keyboard. Lastly, the strafe comes with a dedicated Windows lock key in the upper right hand corner while the Black Widow X does not. Now I'm going to give you guys the pros and cons of each keyboard to summarize everything I have said in this review. Let's start off with the Black Widow X Chroma, which retails for $159. Pros. The software is pretty user friendly. The design, in my opinion, is spot on. But the cons, the lighting is poorly executed as there is no white backplate behind the key switches. There is no USB or audio mic pass through like there was in the Black Widow Ultimate, and there are no macro keys like they were in the Black Widow Ultimate. Moving on to the Corsair Strafe RGB, which still retails for $149. Pros, it emits the lights brighter and more effectively. It includes a wrist rest, keycap puller, FPS, and MOBA keycaps, and there is a USB pass-through. Some of the cons, the software is not as user-friendly uh, compared to the Razer Synapse, there are no macro keys, and there is no mic or headphone pass-through. In conclusion, I can't really decide which one I would choose over the other one. Both keyboards provide a clean and minimalistic design, but the Black Widow X feels more premium with its metal top plate. On the other hand, the Strafe may be a better bang for your buck, but the Black Widow X Chroma is designed to feel and look like it's worth every penny. In the end, it'll come down to personal preference. So thank you guys for watching this comparison between the Razer Black Widow X Chroma and the Corsair Strafe RGB. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comment section down below as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.